Hi guys, just a quick video today discussing STL file saving options in SOLIDWORKS. So STL files, it's a type of file format used specifically for 3D printing to convert a 3D geometry into a format a 3D printer can recognize. So the basics of it is a 3D model will be converted into a set of triangles representing that model. So on Wikipedia, this is an image of a CAD model in this red line, which is representing a donut and a STL model trying to replicate that shape. So we can see it doesn't perfectly match and we'll go into some of those details about that. So in SOLIDWORKS, I've created a sphere, which is about 6.5 centimeters in diameter and there's a small hole through that sphere of about 0.5 millimeters. 0.5 millimeters diameter is roughly the smallest hole you can print with SLA technology. So in preform software, which is the software used for Formlabs 3D printers, I've saved a low resolution STL sphere on the left and a high resolution sphere on the right. So straight away, we can see that the low resolution file isn't exactly a sphere. We can see the tessellated pattern um, and we can easily see these facets. Also, if I zoom in on the small holes in the low resolution file, we can see that it's not exactly a circle. It has about 12 sides there. Whereas if we go to the high resolution file, if we zoom all the way in, we can see that that's a smooth circle. So in SOLIDWORKS, when you're saving an STL file, you can go save as STL and then you've got this options box down here. So if I go into this options box, I can set my STL resolution. I can go to course, fine or custom. So we can see with the course resolution that we can easily see the, the tessellated pattern and finds a bit better. But if we go into custom, we even have more control. So we have these two sliders called deviation and angle. So I'll set them both to the coarsest resolution. So essentially what the deviation does is it adjusts the amount of the distance that each facet can be from its original geometry. So if I increase the deviation, I can see that more, more facets are being created. And I'll put that all the way down. And if I were to save a file as that, which I have already done, um, I'll open this up in preform. So I'll go sphere, find deviation. We can now see that this sphere looks pretty good. It looks just about as good as the high resolution sphere. If we do zoom in, we can see the, the tessellated pattern, but it looks a lot smoother, um, especially when compared to the low resolution sphere. However, if we zoom in on this small circle in this fine deviation sphere, we can see that it's still not quite a circle. It's still got um, these 12 edges. So essentially what this deviation slider does is it adjusts the whole part accuracy, but it doesn't quite address the accuracy of fine details like that small circ circular cutout. So if I were to then adjust the angle, when I actually do this, we can see in the preview that the part doesn't seem to be changing, but actually the geometry of that small circular cutout is changing. So if I were to save a file with a fine angle resolution, and then open that up in STL viewing software, sphere fine angle, we can see that this sphere still looks quite low resolution. Um, we can still see the tessellated pattern. However, if we zoom in, we can now see that this circle is quite smooth. So essentially, if you want to save a high quality STL file with good whole part accuracy and good fine detail resolution, you need to specifically in SOLIDWORKS adjust this angle and slider to whatever you want. Now, if you're using a 3D printer, adjusting everything all the way may not make sense because your 3D printer's resolution might not even be compatible with those settings. So just experiment and play around and see what works best with you. Generally, I find it's okay to save files that aren't too large at high um, resolution settings. Um, however, when you're opening it up in other software, it might take a while to load and you might get problems with compatibility with other software.
So just to wrap up, um, looking at the SolidWorks website, it says discussing the deviation slider, um, move the deviation slider to adjust the deviation tolerance, which controls whole part tessellation. Lower numbers or a finer resolution will cre create greater whole part accuracy. And then move the angle slider to adjust the angle tolerance, which controls smaller detail tessellation. So thank you very much, and I hope that helped.